Well, welcome into this week's Degrees of Science. You know, we've had a lot of episodes talking about drought across the U.S., but an area that I didn't know as much about and learned, Jillian, from your weather extra is down in the Amazon in Brazil of how bad the drought conditions are there. So how bad are conditions down there? Well, the Amazon River is actually the lowest it's been in 121 years. And the reason why this is so important is that one-fifth of the world's fresh water travels and comes from the Amazon River. And so it's impacting communities and ecosystems. And so, yeah, this is definitely a something that is turning serious pretty quickly. Yeah, and, and you, do, you know, I went and looked at the Amazon. You don't think, you think of the Amazon as the longest river, but all the tributaries that feed mm -hmm. into it, and some of these are major rivers as well. And then the problem of how many people, their lives depend on that river. They can't even travel without it. Yeah, 500,000 people, about how, how many people are being impacted by this. And we're talking, we were actually chatting <laughs> earlier about they take boats to school. Mm, yeah. They, you know, they depend. Their livelihood is based on this river, and it just goes to show you how little rainfall can just change everything. Yeah, and you know, there, one of the main tributaries that feed, feeds in is the Rio Negro River, and there's a town, Manaus. It's a large town. Two million people live in that area. That river, since July 1st, has dropped 48 feet. So it's went from 91 feet to down to in the 40s, but it's dropping at three to six inches per day. You know, and most of your rivers in the United States have levees and dams and stuff like that with all the lakes we've built. So it kind of controls that some, but to think of three to six inches per day, and that's got a major port there. And that again, that feeds right into the Amazon. I mean, you just need two days and you're already losing a foot of <laughs> water. Crazy. And it also has to do with some of the extreme heat. Parts of mm. South America have actually seen temperatures just this past week alone above 110 degrees. So they're dealing with obviously the drought and then you have, have the extreme heat. And so it's just a bad combination of everything. Yeah, and that Rio Negro, I think back in 2010, it was close to where, but their records go back all the way to the early 1900s, 1902 or 2003 that it's never been this this low before. So yeah, like I said, you add the heat, then you add the drought, and then you talk about the fire concern. And if you go further up the uh, Rio Negro, there's a lake, Lake Tefe, I'm hoping I'm saying that right. So that lake is home to a, a couple endangered species of dolphins. That lake got down so far in the heat that it got up to 102 degree water temperature. And they're still trying to study what exactly happened, but over 100 dolphins died inside of that that lake. I mean, it's just crazy to think some of this stuff. Uh, and you, I, they also have to turn and think about the human impact. Yeah. You know, we obviously talked about how this is going to be impacting the economy, but now we're hearing stories of children and elderly people being <laughs> sick because of all the diseases that are laying around in the water and also just the fact that the fish and <laughs> everything, they're, it's dying such at a fast pace. And so they're every single day, just reading all these stories online is, is a, a really hard challenge for them. Yeah, it'd there. be like where we are if you just took the interstates out and said, all right, exactly. you know, you, your livelihood comes from Dallas or Austin, but you can't get there. So they're having to send helicopters and tractors and whatever to try to get farther up into the Amazon because, again, it's those, those small tributaries. Now, they typically kind of vary throughout the year. We're in their dry season, but they're heading into the wetter season, but they're worried it may not be wet at all, and this could be a prolonged issue. Yeah, and it's El Nino. Mm. We like El Nino because <laughs> it gives us rain mm. whenever we, we need it most, especially right now, but for them, it's the opposite, yeah. so it's really going to be drying them out. And yeah, just here saying the rainy season, it's not helping them out at all. Yeah. And it's just, it's hard to imagine. I like how, that analogy of like taking away the interstates. Yeah. We would, we would be oh. lost. We yeah. would have no way to get around. And so knowing the, the severity of that, is it's pretty it's pretty interesting to see. Yeah, and right now the the El Nino is kind of just getting started, just kind of flaring up, mm -hmm. and a lot of the new estimations are that this could be a pretty extreme El Nino. And for Brazil, particularly the northwestern parts of Brazil where the, most of the Amazon forest is, they expect the way the way El Nino works there is it's drier than normal all the way into March of the next year. So again, they're heading into the rainy season, so you hope that some of these tributaries and waterways will go up, but there's a chance that if they don't then it could continue to kind of feed into this. And then, you know, then you just run into just the environment changing with the lack of rain and how everything's responding. Yeah, and another thing, the little tidbit that I saw was the fact that, you know, tearing down the forest then in return doesn't allow additional rain to, to develop into the area. And so a lot of this is interconnected, um, but that is just one thing I think guess we just have to wait and see. We yeah. hope for rain. I know we hope for rain here locally in Central Texas all the time, but when you talk about a major part of our mm. planet's ecosystem and where we get a lot of rain and all mm. of that, 
it's just troubling to yeah, see. Yeah, I mean, because it's funny or just amazing when you were, I remember in middle school and stuff, you're learning about the Amazon forest and just all the beneficial things it does all over the world. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, losing that forest, having the fires, and just again, I mean, I think it was, I wrote it down somewhere here, 18,000 square miles of the Amazon's burned. So that's twice the size of Vermont, I read in an article. So that's how much is burned. So again, you're losing that ecosystem. You're not getting the rain that may have helped it to kind of regrow. And again, it kind of just feeds back into itself. Mm -hmm. And I, um, I actually wrote another thing too, is that from July through September, the rain amount in Brazil dropped by 40% just in the past four to five decades. So they're already seeing a decreasing trend. And right now what they're afraid of is it's going to just continue to accelerate. And we know here locally, a little bit of water, you know, or we could get a few inches of rain in our area and our lake level has just come up a little bit. So when we talk about three to six inches where it's dropping every single day, that is a ton of rain that they need to Yeah, because you're gonna have to get you're gonna have to have runoff, but then the ground needs to absorb it and all that. And you know, we were talking about people impacted. There's hundred and fifty different smaller towns that have been impacted. And again, Manaus, they're at the intersection of the Rio Negro and the Amazon. Around two million people live there. And again, the fires are causing such a problem that the World Air Quality Index listed it as one of the most unhealthy air qualities. And I'm sure most of the time it's clear, nice, you got, you know, they're probably muggy, but yeah, you know, but yeah, you know, but the, the river or the rainforest kind of helps to clear out the air for a lot of folks. But you know, now you get the drought causing that kind of concern. And then some of the smaller villages, like you were talking about, not getting medicine, not getting food but there's more standing water in small puddles than you normally have the river flowing through. So now mosquitoes are becoming an issue. So you're having disease spread by that. So yeah, it's kind of just one of those, it's, it's a bad cycle where it just keeps feeding on itself and causing more problems it's for those people. It's truly a domino effect. Mm -hmm. Like one thing happens and that leads to another. And before you know it, now you're dealing with yeah. so many problems that all can be solved by, we just need rain. Just need we rain. Just need rain. Yeah. The images almost leave you speechless mm -hmm. because you see houses that you know should be right along the river and you know that their livelihood is based on what is typically inside that river. And so just to see it, oh, it's, just, it's just dirt. Yeah, yeah. Now there's been a lot of NGOs and the Brazilian government's trying to step in and help. I know they're trying to find ways to get food and water and they're trying to get, there's still some dolphins in that lake. They're trying to get them mm -hmm. out of there to a safer area, but yeah, just a scary, scary situation. I think you're an everyday person. I mean, mm -hmm. both you and I really didn't know any of this was going on because it's not happening here locally mm -hmm. or even a, across the United States, but it does impact so much of our weather comes from oh, there. Oh, yeah, yeah, it does. And you know, this is kind of what we like to dive into. So we've got more stories on drought and stuff like that. All you gotta do is check out more of the content here on our Degrees of Science page. And a reminder, if you haven't subscribed, we post a Weather Extra every Sunday, and we've got these episodes along with Sean diving into some of our tropical and uh, outlook stuff. So subscribe to the page, check out some more of these videos here on our YouTube page.